Hi, and welcome to Bible Study with Friends, where our goal is to show and grow a passion for studying God's Word. Today we're going to be looking at, in the book of Mark, we're going to be looking at Jesus wrongfully arrested and tried. Uh, this, you know, being wrongfully arrested is not a new experience for many of us, but uh, Jesus was definitely wrongfully arrested and wrongfully tried. And we're going to look at the details of that today when we come back. So hi and welcome back to Bible Study with Friends. We are going to continue in our study. I'm here with my friend Stan Ford. We're glad you are joining us on YouTube. Hope this is a blessing mm -hmm. to you. Uh, if you're interested in finding out more about our ministry, there's a website right here. And there's also the website is mentioned in the uh, description below the video. You can go and check us out to see what we're all about and why we do what we do. But in the meantime, I'm here with Stan. How you doing, Stan? I'm good, Lan. I'm getting excited. We're we're getting closer to the end of Mark. <laughs> yeah, been a nearly a year, I think. Yeah, this this <laughs> is the forty third part of our study in Mark. So for forty three weeks, we've been going through this verse by verse. It's been really good. I think it's been. Yeah, it's been. And uh, I appreciate you sticking with us and and uh, for your participation in your discussion it's uh, been great this this subject today of jesus arrest and trial and the fact that it was wrongfully and we're going to see even jesus makes a comment about being wrongfully arrested but we're going to yeah. we're going to see this this little section of the arrest and trial is in all four gospels matthew mark luke and john all have descriptions of this of this moment today instead of having to flip around i'm going to be going along and and i might give some details and i'll give you the reference and uh, if you want to stop the video and go and look it up you can if you want to uh, just mark it down and make a note and you can go to that later and read it uh, but i'm going to give some details by referring to matthew mark and luke as we go through the book of mark does that sound practical yeah okay right. <laughs> well let's let's get into that we're going to be in the in the 14th chapter this is we're going to be in thursday night still uh the passover it's it is passover passover starts on sunset thursday night this is after they have their passover meal uh it's a few hours because they've they've walked across after they left the Passover, they walked across to the Garden of Gethsemane. Mm -hmm. And that's where he's going to be arrested. But if you remember, we just finished up last week where he goes off and he spends some time. Three times he goes off and prays by himself. And we don't know whether those prayers were an hour long or whatever, but long enough for the disciples to mm -hmm. continually be falling asleep. And then we start with verse... 43 and now I'm going to back up a couple of verses and just look at this. Let's look at this together Stan Okay, if we back up to verse 41 It says uh, he came the third time. This is when the disciples are asleep and they're sleeping and, and he says are, are you still sleeping and resting <laughs> and then he goes, okay, it, it's enough the hour has come behold uh, basically look the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. Behold, the one who betrays me is at hand. This is Judas coming. Yes. Verse 43 then immediately picks up and says, there's that word immediately, which immediately. is all through the book of Mark. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, came up accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs. Now, we know from John chapter 18, verse 12, that that crowd is uh, a group of Roman soldiers and temple guards yeah. know, that are sent. So this is a combination crowd. Now, Mark doesn't care. So he's basically just saying this big group of people came and they were armed with clubs and swords. 
And it says this crowd were from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. In other words, the, the Jewish temple leaders sent this combination of Roman soldiers and temple guards to arrest Jesus. Yeah. In verse 44, he says, Now he, was, he who was betraying him had given them a signal, saying, Whomever I kiss, he's the one, seize him and lead him away under guard or lead him away safely. This is an interesting thing because, number one, we get a little off kilter when it says Judas kissed Jesus. But it was a very proper thing for uh, a Jew to greet a rabbi with either a kiss on the cheek or a kiss on the hand. It was a very proper greeting. But yeah. here, instead of being a proper greeting of respect, it was a betrayal Yeah. with the kiss. Now, we know from Matthew 26, verse 50, that at this moment, Jesus gives Judas one more chance, basically. And Jesus calls Judas friend. And that gives Judas one last opportunity to realize that he was betraying a friend here. As yeah. he, he kisses him. Now, why do you think Judas had to kiss Jesus as a signal? And I've never thought about that before. Uh, he could have just said, uh, pointed him out to the uh, soldiers, but he... Uh, well, he that and that's what he's doing. He's pointing him out. But why do you think he needed to point him out? Why did Judas have to go and and signal who he who Jesus was the the um, so a lot of thoughts a lot of the uh, commentaries and things say that that the the Roman guards and the temple guards even may not have been present when Jesus was in the temple and may not be able to tell him apart from the other well, yeah. from the other 11 in other words uh, w one of the commentaries I read that was an interesting comment was that Jesus looked ordinary. He he was just an ordinary Jew. There was nothing yeah. special. He wasn't taller than anybody. He didn't have a halo. He didn't have piercing blue eyes or something that would set him across because Judas couldn't tell the guards at, uh, to just go and arrest Jesus. That He had to go with them and show him which one of this crowd of was 12 Jesus. people, 11 disciples and Jesus, which one was Jesus? Okay. So Jesus didn't stand out in his in his group. He was just an ordinary appearing Jewish man. And he, he appeared in the same kind of cultural dress. He wasn't dressed differently. He wasn't, he didn't appear differently. He didn't, uh, you know, have something radiating from him. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So Judas I, I, was required to really go and point him out to the guards to make sure they arrested the right person. Uh, it, it's and to the the kiss and calling him rabbi. Uh, I was thinking about that this week. That was just about like a, a sense of mockery that Judas was paying toward toward Jesus. Definitely a betrayal. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, um, it was. He, he he was not showing respect. He was yeah. betraying him with by pointing him out. Yeah. And and uh, it just need. I I just thought it was an interesting thing that Jesus had to be pointed out. So picture yeah. so the disciples and Jesus and he's got a halo and he's got he's he maybe he's taller or he's got a white robe or whatever it is. That's just not right. Uh, factually. Yeah. Jesus looked like the other 11 disciples. He looked, you know, he had to be pointed out. Yeah. After coming to him, Judas immediately went to him saying, Rabbi, and he kissed him. So here yeah. again, this is a proper way to address a, a rabbi, but he's not doing it in a respectful way. Yeah. Now in 46, after this, this kiss, they laid hands on him and seized him. 
But one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his ear. Now, we, we know from John 18, verse 10, yeah. that the one who cut the ear off of the high priest, he was basically going for a head thrust and missed and cut his ear off. Yeah. That's it in John 18, 10, we know that that's Peter. Now, the yeah. disciples, in Luke twenty two fifty one. It says the dis disciples, among all of them, only had two swords. Peter had one, and somebody else had one. Okay. Yeah. But they only had two swords, <laughs> and they're they're a little outnumbered. But Peter, being Peter, he takes his sword out, and he's going to defend Jesus to the death. And he misses and cuts the ear off of the high priest, uh, the high priest servant. In Mark, that's the only detail he gives. Then he moves on. But Luke, being a doctor, be, being a doctor, Luke is interested in a little one more detail. And in, in Luke chapter 22, verse 38, he, he goes into detail about how Jesus puts the ear back. Now, I think all of this starts to mount up because Peter has told Jesus earlier, we talked about this in an earlier week, that he wouldn't, he wouldn't run. He was going to go down fighting, right? Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> and I think the fact that Jesus surrenders, he heals the servant's ear, and he literally surrenders. There's no fight in him. There's no protest. He just gives up. That was not something the apostles were prepared to do. The apostles may have been willing to go down fighting on their own terms, right? Yeah. But when Jesus shows that he's going to be a servant Messiah who basically allows himself to be taken, that was was not something the disciples were willing to do. Could it be that uh, the disciples were still looking at Jesus as a political savior to deliver them from Roman rule? Yeah. And they thought that he would fight? The... Yeah, and, and if... There's one of the versions talks about um, that they take offense at him and run. And that offense could be very well, well, listen, I didn't sign up just to give up and just to give in to these to this wrongful arrest. I want to protest. I want to I want to go down fighting and I'll go yeah. down fighting with you. But. It's a completely different thing to willingly offer yourself. Yeah, they, Jesus didn't uh, resist or anything. He just, he and, went. And in verse you 48 know? and 49, it basically says, Jesus said to, to the crowd, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as if I was a robber, as you'd come against a robber? Yeah. And every day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you didn't seize me then. But this has taken place to fulfill the scriptures. Now, this is that wrongful arrest. They're coming like a like a lot of government things that they want to kind of sneak by. It happens late at night. Yeah. And so they're not they're not seizing Jesus when he's out in the in the public because they were afraid of the crowd. Remember? So they're doing this privately yeah. and, and in the dark. And they're coming, and this is what Jesus is talking about. I'm being wrongfully arrested here instead of being arrested in public where you're, you're going to give charges against me and you're going to arrest me. And then it says they all left him and fled. Now, yeah, this is when the disciples basically give it up, right? Yeah. And they run. Because if Jesus isn't going to let me fight, uh, I'm going to run. And this is yeah. where... We, a lot of times we want to follow Jesus on our own terms, don't we? I'm willing to follow Jesus if he lets me do it on my own terms. G Peter was willing to go down fighting. In fact, he he tried to do a, a death stroke on, on one of the arresting officials. And Jesus said, no, 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 don't, don't do that. In fact, he heals the slave and then proceeds to just give himself up. And Peter and the apostles are going, this is not what I had in mind. I wanted to go down in a blaze of glory kind of thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. like you said, it's, you know, the, like you said, they, they wanted to turn, uh, serve him on their own terms. And that's the way we are a lot of times. We want to serve yeah, God. We're, we're, willing, we're willing to serve as long as he lets us serve 
the way we want to. And I think this is yeah. an example of Jesus saying, no, uh, guys, I've come not as a political messiah with a sword, but I've come as a sacrifice. I've come as a lamb. And I've come as a sacrifice to be given. And he gives in. Now, yeah. it's very interesting. He says, this has taken place to fulfill the scriptures. So I was curious, what scriptures are fulfilled here? And I want you to turn over to Isaiah. Say yeah. yeah. Isaiah chapter 53. This is a fantastic verse in Isaiah about the Messiah. And it really shows Jesus as the Messiah. Many, many Jews that read Isaiah 53 become believers in Messiah as 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 Jesus. Yeah. And it's great. But I want to look specifically at what Jesus is talking about when he says, I I've got to be arrested here because this fulfills scripture. Now let's take a look at Isaiah 53, verse 3 first. Okay. Uh, he was despi despised and forsaken of men, a man of sorrows, and acquitted with uh, grief, and like one from whom men hide their face. He was despised, and we did not fault esteem him. Okay, so he's despised, and, and men hide from him, okay? Yeah. Now, look at verse 7, and read from read 7, 8, and 9. Those three okay. Verses. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted. Yet he did not open his mouth, like a lamb that is led to slaughter, and like a sheep that is silent before the shears. So he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And as far as his generate for his generations, who considered that he was cut off, out cut off out of the land of the living for the transgressions of my people, to whom the stroke was due. His grave was assigned with wicked men. Yet he was with rich with a rich man in his death. Because he had done no violence, nor was there any deceit in his mouth. Now, did you see that? It's, a, it's interesting. He he was a lamb to the slaughter. He, there was no violence. He, he was quiet. He just allowed himself to be arrested. This was all foretold yeah. in Isaiah 53. And the yeah. thing about the rich man is we're going to see that a little bit later. But that just this whole episode of the wrongful arrest and the wrongful trial just helps fulfill these scriptures. Now, f one more verse. Flip to verse 12 of Isaiah 53. Okay. Therefore, I will not allot him a portion with the Greek, and he will divide the, the bounty with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors, yet he himself bore the sin of many and intercede for the transgressors. So this is all part of the salvation Jesus is going to offer by accomplishing on the cross, dying for the sins that we should have been punished for. It says yeah. that very clearly in yeah. Isaiah 53. And that he's and this, going to this be counted as with, he's going to be hung with criminals. Yeah. So he, this and, whole episode, the, the arrest, the trial, and the death is all to fulfill Scripture. And Jesus is just giving himself up as a lamb to the slaughter for yeah. the sake of our sin, to die for us. Yeah. And this was prophesied about, what, 700 years before oh, yeah. Christ's Isaiah. birth. Yeah. yeah, way back. Yeah. And, and very detailed. And that's why a lot of Jewish people uh, have never read Isaiah 53. They read Isaiah, but they skip Isaiah 53. And the, yeah. one of the reasons is, is it's, it's very plain. And many, many Jews who read Isaiah 53 really have to consider Jesus as the one who fulfills this prophecy of Messiah coming to die for the sins of Israel and for the sins uh, of us. Yeah. We do that. So, so he says, this has got to happen to fulfill this prophecy. And, and they left him and fled. And then there's an ep interesting episode here. Yeah. Mark uh, 14, 51 and 52. So the young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen sheet over his naked body, and they seized him. But he pulled free of the linen sheet and escaped naked. 
All right, now, this episode of this of this naked young guy is only in the book of Mark. It's it's not in Matthew, Luke, or John. All of them have the story of the arrest, but only Mark has this little episode of the young man who came. And so, who do you think the young man was? Well, I did some studying on that, and some think it was young Mark. Yeah. Now, I, I've read a couple of commentaries, a couple... And I think there's agreement on this that probably this number one, John Mark is writing this with Peter's help, and this is yeah. a this is an an experience, a personal experience of John Mark that he is putting into the story. This isn't yeah. a made up thing. This is this happened to him, and he's putting this in that hey, I was there. Why would he have been there? Now this is an interesting thing, and a lot of the scholars give this speculative of commentary and that is this jesus is having the last supper in the, in an upper room of a house and they think that this may have been john mark's home and okay. so he's in the upper room but they get done and, and judas leaves them in the upper room right yeah he leaves them up in this room and he goes to get the crowd to to come and arrest him now jesus then leaves and he goes over to the mount of olives uh, to the Garden of Gethsemane. Well, Judas doesn't know that he's left and gone there, so Judas brings the crowd to arrest him to the house where Jesus was, right? Okay, yeah. It, when they did that, it would have been a commotion, and if that's John Mark's house, he's awakened by this crowd, and he says, I'm going to run ahead and warn Jesus. So he runs to the Garden of Gethsemane, and he... Okay. He doesn't even get dressed. He just runs in his nightgown, right? He's he's yeah. naked underneath, and he's just got a nightgown on. And so he runs there, but they catch him, and they grab him, and he sees all the apostles have have split. They're, they're all gone. And so they grab him, and he runs also, but they grabbed hold of his robe, so he runs away naked. That's just an yeah. interesting little personal anecdote of of a personal thing and so most scholars believe that this is young john mark who is later and writing the book of mark i read too they said that uh some uh i forgot who it was said that they thought that he didn't put his name in there because he didn't want any uh thing pointing to him didn't want yeah. any yeah yeah he, he's not putting this in for any glory he's just saying yeah everybody fled and including this young guy who who he had to flee naked that's how yeah. determined he was to flee and it now, stands to reasoning because it's nowhere else in the scripture you know just yeah. in this one part here yeah it's it's uh we know it's not peter because peter is there with him yeah so we think it's john mark anyway then we pick back up this is that's the wrongful arrest now they're going to have a wrongful trial now, what makes this a, yeah. a wrongful trial, really an illegal trial, is the Jews weren't allowed to have trials at night. Yeah. And they're basically sneaking this trial by. They, they don't want any publicity. They don't want any crowds. They're going to they're gonna sneak this trial by, condemn Jesus, and get him to the cross as quickly as they possibly can. So they're having an illegal trial. Now we see verse 53. We're going to go very quickly through this. They led Jesus away to the high priest and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes gathered together. In other words, this is the Sanhedrin, the, yeah. the leadership of, of the Jewish uh, faith at this point, uh, the leadership from the temple, the leadership of the faith. Now, Peter, this is a little detail. Peter had followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest and he was sitting with the officers now that word officer means the the underlings it could mean servants it could mean um serving military we we just don't know it the word is a little bit ambiguous but he's sitting down yeah. with people who have arrested and are going to try jesus and he's warming yeah. himself at the fire and that that's just a little parenthesis we're going to we're going to come back to that next week. Now the chief priest verse 55 
the chief priests and the whole council, in other words, that all of the Sanhedrin met, and this is about 3 a.m., okay? This is 3 yeah. o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Uh, this is a long way from sunset when Sabbath started. Then he had the meal, then he went to the garden and prayed, and now the arrest, and now the trial is, is early, early, early morning. They were all gathered, the whole yeah. council, and they, and they kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death. They had, a, they had an agenda. They were, it's like, uh, you, you're, you're guilty, and I, I'm going to prove it no matter what. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. This is that wrongful trial. Again, the trial is, is very iffy. We're trying to get witnesses against you, and they were not finding any. Yeah. Okay? Because many were giving, there were many witnesses, but they were giving false testimony against him, but their testimony was not consistent. In other words, one guy would say he did this, one guy would say he did that. So there were, obviously these were bad witnesses because they didn't jive. Yeah, yeah I found it interesting, Liam, that these Jews were testifying against it, and it was going against the Old Testament, the like Exodus, the Ten Commandments, not to bear false witness against your neighbor. Yeah, that, and, yeah, and, and and Deuteronomy it even talks about it. And yeah, they they were definitely bearing false witness, and, and it yeah. was obviously because the witnesses, the witness testimony wasn't jiving. Yeah. So these were not coached witnesses; they were just witnesses that that uh, you know the the scribe says, "Don't you find him to be a a blasphemer?" And, oh yeah. And here's why, and then they'd make up something. Yeah. It goes some in verse 58. We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and in three days I will build another made without hands. Now, did he did he say that? No, he did not say that. Yeah, we we no. just read he, he basically yeah. said, Destroy this temple in three days. I'll raise it up. Yeah. But he didn't talk about, I'm going to rebuild the temple. Yeah. Without He's hands. talking about his own temple, his yeah, himself. Yeah. And he's, verse 59 says, not even in this respect was their testimony consistent. Some of them understood him differently than others understood him. And this whole thing about destroying the temple. And, and he didn't say, I will destroy the temple. He said, the de temple will be destroyed. Yeah. He didn't say, I'm going to tear it down. This false trial is a scam. It's, 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 uh, it's scurrilous. Um, and it, it says in 59, not even in this respect was their testimony consistent. And one of the things was you had to have two or three witnesses agree. That was the law. Yeah. So they're, they're breaking the law of giving false witness. And they're breaking the law of you need two or three witnesses that agree. So the high priest stood up and he came forward and questioned Jesus directly, saying, yeah. do you not answer? What is it that these men are testifying against you? In other words, don't you remember Jesus is just standing there quietly. That fulfilled yeah. the office. But he kept silent in verse 62, 61 and did not answer. And again, the high priest was questioning him and saying to him, are you the Christ? the son of the blessed one. Are are you the Christ? The, are you Messiah, the son of God? Yeah. Now, we learn here, this is a straight question, but it's not a question from the high priest's heart. He's not wondering, are, are you Jesus? Are you the Messiah? Are you the son of God? He is addressing this question with no intention of wanting to know what the real answer is. It was more or less, it was a, like a, a uh, entrapment type. Yeah. And question so, and we we have to be careful because not everybody who asks a question about Jesus wants a straight answer yeah they may be looking for a way of accusing us of something and that's yeah. what was happening here they asked Jesus the question now Jesus though this is an opportunity Jesus said I am yeah. the, the Christ I am the son of the blessed one I am the son of God I am and you will see the Son of Man, me, sitting at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. That's the final judgment. That's the, the end times. But he says, I am the Messiah. And you're, you're going to see me sitting at the right hand of God. And you're going to see me coming back in judgment. 
and tearing his clothes, the high priest said, we don't need any more witnesses. Now that was not true. You couldn't condemn yourself, but that's, that's okay. They're, they're, that's enough as far as he's concerned. He tears yeah. his clothes, which is, which is a, a sign of, of this deep distress. He tears his clothes. This is a little bit of theater. And he says, what further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. How does it seem to you? And they all condemned him to be deserving of death. At this point, Nicodemus and, jo uh, and uh, Joseph of Arimathea, if they're there, they're really being cowards here. But no more of a coward than the disciples who split. Yeah, you know, yeah. We, we don't be too hard on them. They're they're going with the crowd and they're, they're looking around and saying, man, this is uh, I'm not sure I want to speak up here. Uh, and they condemned him to be deserving of death. And some began mm. to spit on him and to blindfold him and to beat him with their fists. And they were saying to him, prophesy. And the officers received him with slaps in the face. This idea of spitting on him, Deuteronomy 25, 9, and Isaiah 50, verse 6, and yeah. even Job chapter 30, verse 10, talks about this sp spitting on someone um, as a sign of, of condemnation. And so at this point, we're going to stop, and we're going to see, we're going to pick up at verse 66 next week, and we're going to see the episode of Peter's betrayal, and we're going to see that after this. But what we've seen today, pretty clearly, I believe, is that Jesus was falsely arrested and falsely tried illegally just to get a quick conviction, yeah. just to get him to the cross as quickly as possible with the least amount of publicity as possible. What I got to, Lynn, from some of this was that uh, even though the uh, Jesus didn't come to do what the disciples wanted him to do for his deliverance from a political uh, right. uh, Roman rule, and we can put ourselves out. We follow Jesus as long as he wants to, as he's doing what we think he should be yeah. doing for us. There's a yeah. lot of Christians that want Jesus to be a political leader and yeah. want him to be, have a political agenda. And Jesus just doesn't. And he's yeah. showing himself here. He's come to die for the sins of the world. That's Isaiah 53. And, yeah. and he has that agenda and that's what he's doing. He's coming as the serving Messiah who's come to die on the cross and to serve man with dying for their sins. Yeah. And we, we can praise him for that. Listen, I hope you guys on YouTube like that. Uh, we're blessed with this, this idea and uh, saw some details that perhaps you didn't know before. And if you were blessed, hit the subscribe button. That helps us. And also hit the bless button, the, the like button. When you hit the like button on a video, it blesses us, and it shows us that we uh, we are, uh, are are blessing you, and that's what we want to do. And uh, we're going to continue in our study. We're almost done with the study of Book of Mark. We're going to continue with Peter's denial starting next week. And until then, God bless you.